So basically just coming out to practice today and just basically picking up where we left off at. I mean, last week's practice, although we had the week off, everybody treated it like we was playing the game. It was great practice last week for the defense and the offense. What did you kind of work on specifically? Uh, basically fundamentals, like going back to your fundamentals, that's usually what we do on bye weeks, really focus on the fundamentals. We went and did a bunch of tackling and like make sure we everybody understands their assignments and reading their keys and stuff like that. Okay. I assume you spent a little time specifically looking at Rutgers? Yes, ma'am. What do you see when you watch them on the uh, I see that, that they can definitely hurt us on a play action pass. So for, for me playing in the secondaries, I have to basically be real disciplined and trust that my brothers are going to stop the run and I just need to focus on the pass. Basically just trust everybody. When you have a bye week, do you get a chance to look at what's going on around the rest of the country in college football? Mm-hmm. And what, what are your thoughts on where you guys may fit into that mix? Uh, I, I feel like we we have the potential to be up there with everybody else. I mean, I mean, yeah, we had some struggles earlier on, but I feel like as of lately we've been playing like as good as ball as anybody has been. And I mean, everybody's coming along as long as we keep progressing. I mean, when that time comes, I, I pray that we're in the picture. Do you watch games on Saturday? I do. I definitely do. Who did you watch this past Saturday? Uh, the game that I watched was uh, MSU and Purdue. And then I watched, uh, what was that game? I watched uh, the team up north in Penn State. And then I watched, uh, also I was watching that in the Arkansas-Alabama game. Huh. The Tigers should have games Uh, um, I mean, it, it, I could see it as being like good and bad. The way I see it could be good is if we basically pick up where we left off, we get that momentum going, it's, it's good to keep it going and keep playing and keep progressing. But I mean, if people like, if we come back this week and be like lackadaisical because we had a week off, then I could see where it'd be bad. But I don't see that. I mean, I see everybody's focus. And after uh, suffering that one loss earlier in the season, I mean, everybody's mindset has just totally changed. And we're just trying to get job get the job done on Saturdays now. Were you at home when you were watching all this college Yes, time? yes, I was. Did you bring any of your teammates with you? Uh, no, no, we, uh, everybody went their own separate ways. Who's the best team you saw on Saturday, Tavis? Uh, well, I didn't get to watch the game, but I got to see the highlights. It was probably, uh, I would say, um, I'd probably say Mississippi State. Uh, I mean, I, I see why they rank number one now. I mean, they're yeah. definitely playing a good game, good ball. Yeah, I mean, what stands out about them? Just, I mean, they've played, they've beaten three top ten teams in a row now. Yeah, know? yeah, that right well, they there. Were top 10 when you played, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. what stands out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess they're disciplined and their defense is playing real well. They got a, a great quarterback at quarterback. He's a great leader, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that he's leading that team. And, and I know the coach used to uh, coach for Coach Meyer, and I'm pretty sure they, if he's anything like Coach Meyer, then they they got a great coach. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> Personally, when you when you look at y'all's defense now compared to five weeks ago, where can you see y'all definitely are better? Oh, MAs. We ain't making too many um, mental errors like we was. But we had that conversation after the Virginia Tech loss, mm -hmm. uh, but we had a bunch of uh, mental errors. It's not that it's not hardly any. So everybody's going out there executing the calls now. It's just the only thing that I'm a little frustrated about is just finishing. I mean, we just have to finish in the second half more stronger than what we, we did last the last couple of weeks. And, and Coach Ash, you know, he coached against these guys last year, Rutgers, when he was at Arkansas. And Arkansas blew a bit. What, what has he told you all about them, about Rutgers specifically uh, so far? A little bit of conversation maybe you've had with him. Well, Coach Ash is a very confident coach in his game plan. So he's very confident in the game plan that we're going to use against them. And we should mm -hmm. definitely, if we all go out there and execute right, we should definitely handle business on Saturday. And uh, when I say Gary Nova, what comes to mind? You've gotten to watch him play a little bit, I'm sure, on tape by now, video, uh, their quarterback. Uh, he kind of threw the ball to a lot of other different teams last year, but he seems to be more disciplined now. Yeah, I mean, seems, just what, what stands out about him? I see. It seems like if it's basically I've been watching this. He will make the right call, like because he can read the defenses very well. Mm -hmm. So he would definitely get them in the right call. So it's just basically coming out about disguising and stuff like that, not giving tips to what could be open. So it's basically being real disciplined on that. Do you see more confidence in his play too? I mean, oh, absolutely. I've seen him make some throws that I said, I can't believe he threw that, but he actually yeah. completed it. So I said, okay, yeah, he got a lot of faith in his arm. So that's, that's good to see. Tyvis, when you 
are thinking about you know where Ohio State sort of fits in the national scene and you're watching some of these other teams is it any different doing it when you guys have an early loss as opposed to the previous couple of years you guys were undefeated and you were you know sort of in control of your own destiny is it any how does anything maybe unfold differently during the course of the season when you have an early loss? I think it makes you play like harder because you got something to prove. Like, like you know, you lose early on and people like just okay, they scratch you out because you got a loss. But it's like coming back from that loss, trying to prove to a world that you still do deserve to be in the the big talk or stuff like that. I mean, basically what it has done is just make everybody become more aggressive on offense, on defense. Offense is scoring, defense is playing better. Just basically showing the the people that's gonna pick the bowl games, the people that be in the bowl games, to show them that you deserve to be in that game. Whether as of last year, record just basically tells you that you should be in. But now it's, I feel like though you're a performer, you have to perform now to make them believe that you deserve to be in the game. So it just basically come out and make us everybody play better and to be where they're supposed to be. Does it feel different when you? monitor the landscape of college football when there's a playoff at the end of the year as opposed to a, just a title game? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it definitely, how's it, how's it, feel it, it, it feels a lot different because like, like I said, you gotta, it's not like you're entitled to go to it because of your record. Now it's basically off, off, off the performance level of what they see and Basically, you have to come out and try to dominate every opponent so you can be in that conversation. Now that you, now that we have suffered a loss, because if we're just basically just barely beating people, they might might say that we're not, we're still not good enough. So I mean, it's just coming out and trying to dominate every opponent that we play so in all phases. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is it unusual being on that end of things when you go to Ohio State? You guys aren't in the topic right now. If you turn on Sports Center, yeah. no one's talking about Ohio State in the top four or eight teams. Is it unusual to be? On the outside looking in right I now. mean, it, it kind of makes you angry. <laughs> it really makes you angry and it makes you want to just basically, that's why we've been practicing so hard lately because we want to come back into that conversation. So I would say that it is great motivation to the team to know that we're not in the, com the topic of conversation. So it, it, it makes us come out and practice and work harder so we can be in that topic. Terry, it's, a, it's a, probably a hard comparison to make, but the team that you guys put on the field last year and the team you're putting on the field this year. Can you make any comparisons between, you know, because again, not just the record, but just how you play, how you go about your business. We know you guys were obviously right at the top of the whole conversation last year. How does this team compare to yourselves? I would say that more the job, the, the job descriptions are more black and white. It's plain and simple. So everybody will understand it more. And it wouldn't be like nobody out there like trying to question whether or not they have something. It's like this year you know exactly what you have because we didn't study it. And the concepts is so, it's so uh, like, I don't know, easy for everybody to understand. So I would say that the game plan is definitely more easier to grasp for everybody. Thomas, even though uh, the focus is obviously on the present, on Rutgers, how much do you guys think about the Virginia Tech game and think, what if, and wish you could have that over again? Man, <laughs> man, I, I, it still eats away at me, but I mean, it just I feel like it made us better, because coming here, you know, winning all those games before, going undefeated in all those seasons, it kind of made you feel like you it was going to happen, you know, like you're going to go 12 and 0. But now that it's, we've suffered a loss, it's definitely humbled me and made me just go back to my grind and work to be where I'm supposed to, you know, to be better so it doesn't happen again. Because right. now it's a lot of pressure because if we do lose again, you know, we'll completely be out of the topic. So it just basically put a, it, it kind of adds more pressure, but it allows people to rise to the occasion. So I feel like it's definitely rise everybody game or raised everybody's game, I should say. Tyvis, you were you were talking about Rutgers quarterback a minute ago. Are you a guy, is it just as a fan who appreciates good offense? Oh, yeah. I mean, because it allows us to come out and show our display, our defense. You know, if they got a great offensive coordinator with a great offense. And, I mean, our past defense has been questioned a lot here as a uh, past year. So, I mean, I love going against good offenses because it allows us to show how good of a defense we've become in a year. Well, I was leading new. We had a, two top ten teams play a 61-58 game set. I don't know if you saw that game, but when you see a basketball score, is that annoying to you? Does that make you cringe as a defensive player? 
Yeah. Everyone, oh, everyone seems yeah. to like it, but maybe maybe oh. you do too. I, I mean, know. yeah, I mean, everybody in the world loves to see touchdowns and deep balls being caught. But, I mean, as a defensive player, you're like, wow. But, like, I mean, yeah, somebody can get a stop. I mean, <laughs> where's the defense at? But, I mean, yeah, as a defensive player, I'm definitely kind of upset by those defenses letting those amount of points being scored on them. But I'm pretty sure they'll figure it out and get that fixed out really fast. <laughs> What's it like uh, just being on the defensive side when you're – Trying to cover Evan Spencer, I mean, or trying to stop oh. the run. I mean, what's it like? Oh, in practice? Or whenever, I'm, yeah. Okay, in practice, uh, I'm going to say the two people I go against the most in practice is Dontre and Jalen because they are the H-backs and yeah. I cover the H-backs. And those two have really helped me tremendously, like, come game time because – I feel like those two, they, they're like so fast and so elusive and quick that like when I get in the game, most people aren't like that. So I'm like, if I can cover them in practice, I can definitely cover them in the game. So they definitely upped my game just from checking them in practice all the time. So I huge kudos to them. When you if you ever go up against Evan, though. Oh, Evan Spencer? Yeah. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't really line up at the slot. I yeah. mean, he definitely he lines up outside. So I haven't really got the chance to go up against him. So I, I don't really know. How much one is on one? Last question. You guys do last week. Oh, I did. The, the strong safety did a lot. So all the safety work did a lot. We probably did it. I think we did it every day last week. So I got. I got. I usually don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one reps because I do inside run. But I got a ton of one-on-one -on -one rep last week. Like Offensive best against defensive best. Oh, we did a lot of that too because we needed to uh, improve our game. So we did. Like, we do that at the end of practice. How's the offense changed from last week to the beginning of the season? I would say that. I mean, they came. They come out with some funky formations. They came out with some funky formations. It had me thrown off. So they definitely. I got to give Coach Herman or his kudos because he tricked me. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> he got me. It was actually a seven on seven. He tricked me, but he won't get me again. I'm about to get him today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Will they come out in the eye? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right.